I want to run a more challenging D&D game for my players. And in challenging games, death becomes a lot more likely. Which scares me, because I don't know how my players will take it, or how it will affect the overall game and story. I have never had a PC death before. I'm not saying that I'm going to go out of my way to kill my players, just that I want higher stakes in my games. And since life is a journey, and in some D&D games, death is also a journey, I figured I would go on a journey of my own, from DM to DM, to see how they handle their character deaths in their games to see if I could get some tips on how I should handle it in mine. So let's start with a real simple one, Matt Mercer, who suggests letting the players know that death is a real possibility in your games and let them know that at the start of your campaign. Also let them know how difficult you're planning the campaign to be and discuss with them what they would want to happen if and when they died. Should it be easy for them to be resurrected or is it damn near impossible? Maybe suggest if it's a particularly challenging campaign that both the players and the DM want to run, that they create backup characters. That would be useful not just to take over completely if their main character dies, but also to potentially just play in the interim between their old character dying and potentially being resurrected and brought back. Because to bring a character back to life may take multiple sessions to pull off, and you don't want the player whose character just died to just be sat there waiting and watching, not actually playing the game. Okay, back on the journey to Brennan Lee Mulligan, who thinks that in order for choices to matter, there has to be the threat of death. But you can communicate to your players that death is a real possibility, not just at the start of a campaign, but consistently throughout too. Sometimes your players are coming into the game, acting a little silly, wanting to kill a mind flayer by headbutting them. And sometimes as the DM, it's your job to let them know that if they do indeed act silly here, there could be deadly consequences. You know, clearing out a bunch of rats from the basement, sure. Headbutt every single one of those rats. But if you're entering a lair of a dragon, then make sure there's say, skeleton remains on the ground, or have NPCs warn them how dangerous the area is. Maybe even show the dragon killing a bunch of powerful NPCs really easily. Hell, just break immersion and talk to your players as the DM and just say, guys, this is going to be a hard fight. Just to make sure that when death does happen, that it's not from the players not realising how dangerous the situation is and acting silly, and that it's because this enemy was more powerful than expected or mistakes were actually made in the game or that just really bad rules happened. This way the death will have a lot more weight to it than say the players just not realising that headbutting a dragon was a bad idea. Unless you do want silly deaths. <laughs> In which case, yeah, sure, go ahead, headbutt everything. Onward to Chris Perkins, who not only agrees with Matt Mercer that players should understand what their options are after death, but also that in most D&D campaigns, death does not have to be permanent. And if in your D&D campaign, you do have death as a permanent feature, your players should know that well ahead of time, like during session zero ahead of time. But in a moment where a character dies, Chris emphasizes that you need to have an open dialogue with the player going back over the stuff you would have talked about earlier. Remind them that maybe their character can come back. Maybe they'll be different if they do though. Or maybe the player might just wanna re-roll their new character and start fresh. It's all fine. But when character deaths happen, it can shock the player and all the people around the table. Even if they thought they were ready for it, it can still suck, like a lot. So in the moment it happens, just let them know that it's okay and give them some things to think about moving forwards so they can figure out how they as a player want to proceed. Please don't just ignore them once they die for the rest of the session and most importantly try not to cackle as you pick their mini off the board unless your players are into that oh and we like left our keys over at matt mercer so let's go back real quick because he also has another tip when a character death happens and hopefully the player knew it was a possibility and knows their options moving forwards then describe the death cinematically. Don't gloss over it. Don't feel bad as the DM and try and move out of the situation quickly. Don't try and, you know, not draw too much attention to it. Do the opposite. Make it epic. Make it awesome. A character death can be incredibly powerful and both push the other player character's development and the overall plot forward. So treat it like you would a big reveal or a twist or a defining moment in the story. Make it mean something to the overall world. Matt also suggests letting the player have a moment before their death. Maybe let them get out a battle cry or give them a chance to have an inspirational moment that really means something. Something that can be remembered by the table forever. On to Johnny Stanton who has an exceptional tip on how to handle death saving throws. If your players are knocked unconscious, they have to roll death saving throws. If you fail one of these throws, 
three times, you're dead. If you succeed three times, uh, you're alive. Johnny's tip is to have your players roll these death saving throws behind the DM screen so only the DM and themselves can see and the other players around the table don't know the results. He suggests this because he thinks that rolling death saves should be one of the most cinematic points in D&D. It's literally deciding whether a person lives or dies and rolling these behind a DM screen does two major things. The first is it's a lot more suspenseful and tense if most of the players around the table are not aware of how close to death you are. They could die the very next next round or they could stabilize the very next round. You don't know. The other thing it does is it kind of stops metagaming in combat because if the other players are constantly aware how close or far from death someone is, they may choose to heal other players or choose to attack rather than heal the person who's downed. I know that if my friend is unconscious but has rolled two successful death saves, then I have some wiggle room. Compare that with me not knowing how many death saving throws they've succeeded on or not, we get a very different result. With me presuming the worst, that they're gonna die in the next round unless I do something to help them. Which realistically is probably how the player's character would actually react in a situation like that. Now let's take a brief stop at Jeremy Crawford, whose tip for DMs when it comes to player character death is to consider what happens in your world when someone dies. There's so much lore in D&D, whether that be the Hells, the Fey Realm, the Shadowfell, there's so many options for potential dead to go, if anywhere. And in the vast majority of D&D games, the gods are a very real thing. And you could totally be running a game where what happens after death in that world is still a complete mystery and no one knows. Or, and this is part of world building, you could have a very specific process that happens where souls go. For example, after death, they may go to purgatory for a little bit. And from there, they can be pulled back to the material plane with enough magic. But if you leave it too late, they will move on from purgatory to the afterlife nothing can be done. Jeremy just asks that you consider what happens. You don't need to know 100% for sure every little thing that happens, but when a player character death does happen and you're talking through the options or a total party kill happens, it kind of opens up the door not just for your players to understand how the whole world works a bit better, but it also means the potential for your players to immediately wake up in hell and have the chance to fight their way back to the living or escape uh, or be rescued from purgatory or even have a live characters rip a PC out of heaven where they were happy and then pulling them back into this world full of suffering, Buffy style. So by considering where your players go after death, it opens up world building possibilities, plot, story possibilities, and character development possibilities. And now let's head on with our journey to the subscribe button. Everyone click on it as we pass. Also Discord and Patreon, links in the description. Oh, and we reached Brian Murph Murphy, whose tip for character death is to not have deadly combat for no reason. And he actually said this on a podcast with Brennan, and they both agreed with each other that really, player death just should not happen in low stakes combat. If a PC dies on a random encounter table roll, because you know, you've not done much combat recently, so you thought you'd throw some in there, and it just goes horribly sideways, then you, as the DM, made that encounter table too difficult. But on the other hand, Murph says that if the players die in combat, that the players know can be deadly, and that actually means something to the overall story, like it's the big bad evil guy killing them, then that's a much easier pill to swallow. So make sure your combats are as balanced as possible. Make sure there is low to no chance of a PC death. If it's just the players getting jumped by a bunch of bandits, who have nothing to do with pushing the plot forwards or character development. But if you do want a fight to be impactful, if it is really meaningful to the PC's story, then by all means, turn up the difficulty level. And if the players die, at least it was trying to do something that really meant something. And it looks like we got a little bit lost on the trail here because somehow we ended up going all the way back to Matt Mercer again. But that's okay because he has yet another tip. After a character's death, Matt suggests allowing the other players time to mourn in the game, maybe even holding some kind of wake for the player that passed. But treat it more as a celebration. Celebrate the character's accomplishments and remember them fondly. Matt also suggests, and this is just a suggestion, but let the player of the dead character write like an epilogue. Let them say a few things as their character, like I know they're dead, but just let them get stuff out and let them tie up any loose ends or potentially put closure on their story. And if there's tension around the death still, Matt also suggests maybe going out for some drinks in real life at some point in the near future. In real life, you can talk it through with all the party members and this can help reset everyone. And this is not Matt talking, 
now, this is me. And this may sound over the top to some people, like, oh, that player character died in a game and now we're going out for drinks afterwards where everyone has to, like, talk about it and, and grieve. It's just a game. But I do believe treating player character death cautiously like this is just really good practice. I hear a lot from DMs that think that death is just part of the game. It's almost fun. You know, you die, you get a new character, you move on. And for the majority of people, that is true. But for some, you know, they're role-playing this character for a really long time. They probably got attached. And, you know, death is a very real constant in everyone's real lives. And we don't always know the external factors that might be affecting our players at any given time. Even if we know them really well, we don't know what's going through their head. And you don't know how talking about death a lot and making a player role-play death and having the other players role-play losing someone they love is really going to affect them. They might not even know how it's going to affect them. So, you know, just treat your players like your friends. And, you know, to treat it in its, like, lightest, most fun form, if you take out existential crises and, and what's going on in people's lives and just look at it as it is, which is not being able to play someone anymore that you built up yourself over potentially years... Think of it like if you were <laughs> playing Baldur's Gate 3 or World of Warcraft or a big online game where you got to a really high level and you got really far in the story and you want to see it through and your character dies and then you're just banned from playing that character anymore. At the very least, that sucks a lot, especially if the death happened because of something silly. And we did it, man. We got around today, all the way from Matt Mercer to Matt Mercer. But if you want to keep the journey going, follow the path into this video here. Thanks for watching.